at Chicagoland Speedway. NASCAR on NBC with coverage of the Tropicana 400. An early caution has slowed the race just four laps in. Ward Burton was the driver involved. Never see Ward Burton coming down pit road once again to make some adjustments to the cat car. And we take a look at what happened to bring out the yellow and put Ward He's crossways on the racetrack. There. Really hard to tell. Hard to tell from his contact what might have caused it. There probably was on board with Jimmy Spencer. And all of a sudden, Spencer sees a lot of smoke and a spinning car in front of him. Now, there is some damage there on the front of the 22, which definitely is not going to help his day. Also, it looked like Jeff Green's car was damaged in that as well. It looked like the left rear of his car has some damage. Aerodynamics, real important here, Benny, especially what they're working on, that left front fender. Yes, left front fender is so critical to all these racetracks. We see the NASCAR officials giving all the crew signal. One lap to go, the cars come by this time. Next time by, they'll go green flag. So they're trying to get some tape, something over that gap in that left front fender to help the downforce. I think they need more than tape, don't yeah, you? Do. Get the ribbit gun out. Here's our Circuit City track fact. Chicagoland Speedway now in its second season of operation. 75,000 grandstand seats. You know, the, the grandstand is longer than if you laid the John Hancock building in downtown Chicago end to end twice. You're just full of that useless information, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, that's, just, that's for sure. Just read it in the track <laughs> press guide, okay? Every one of those 75,000 seats full today for the Tropicana 400. Second, uh, one lap to go for the restart. A lot of cars in the back did stop, make pit stops, getting that fuel, because now, who knows, some of those guys might try to make it on a less stop. Monday night at 9, 8 Central, catch NBC's new summer hit, Dog Eat Dog. Watch Dog Eat Dog Monday nights at 9, 8 Central on NBC. You know, one thing we want to keep an eye on, uh, BP, I was talking to Newt Moore, the crew chief on Kenny Schrader's car, and you know, the tires here, some of the tires they're using here are from last year. So some of the sets are used and are new and some are old, and they found tires yesterday, so that's one thing we should watch. A lot of these cars pitting early, they may not have liked what they had there on their car. There's Kenny. They said their car was really, really good. They went out to make one more run. They put four sticker tires on it, and the car was junk. That's not a good position to be in. No. Sticker tire being a brand new tire, fresh out of the Goodyear truck that still has the new sticker on it. Thank you, Alan. Well, I know. Someone's got to explain I these things took it for granted. That's right. Green flag. Ward Burton had pulled up the inside of leader Ryan Newman, but he has to go to the tail end of the line for this restart because he came down did road before it was open. Second place here. Here comes Sterling Marlin. 40 car Sterling Marlin on the inside of Bill Elliott in nine. And this is really a bad time to be up in that upper lane right now because everybody is nose to tail. So Bill Elliott, he got lucky. He squeezed in there. And down in front of Tony Stewart in line. Right behind Stewart, Dale Earnhardt Jr., then Rusty Wallace, Dale Jarrett, Michael Waltrip, Todd Bodine, and Bobby Labonte. Those are your top ten early. Well, Elliott's going to come right back on Sterling. Sterling slipped up the racetrack a little bit. Bill Doe down underneath him. Now Sterling may lose a couple of positions. Oh, he's trying to come. <laughs> he's trying. It was not successful. See, Tony didn't let him in. Tony believed that. Junior goes by. And Rusty Wallace through two. So Sterling Marlin shuffled quickly back to sixth place from second. On board with Tony Stewart looking out the back bumper at Dale Earnhardt Jr. But you know, it's so early in the race, there's no need, especially with the championship lead, there's no need for Sterling to press that issue. Let's check out the miles per hour down the front straight. It's going to be a little bit faster down the front, down the back. 187, 8, 9, 190, what? 194 miles per hour. About 8,800 plus RPMs going into turn one there. Notice the back straight is not straight here at Chicagoland. Kind of a continuing arc all the way around. 
One of the unique features about this speedway compared to most other tracks on the circuit. And he was almost as fast down the back straightaway, 193 miles per hour. See, as you watch the RPMs, that's what, that's what has the engine builders just sweating today because of the RPM. They see so many RPMs down the front straightaway, but watch as it goes down. It only goes down to 7,400. That's the minimum, 74 to 9,000. So it, if you average that out, the thing's going to be turning about 8,500, 8,400 all day long for 400 miles, and that really concerns engine build. That's a lot of work on an engine. Big news for this 20 team this morning, and Bobby Labonte, his teammate, Joe Gibbs Racing, going to switch to Chevrolets for next year from these Pontiacs. In fact, that may happen as soon as a couple of weeks from now. They're taking to an Indianapolis Motor Speedway test tomorrow and Tuesday for the Brickyard 400. Two Chevrolets and two Pontiacs for each team. They're going to test them both and decide which one they want to run at Indy. Well, that's a big load of Pontiac. That's their 13. Pontiac's reaction to that in the press conference they held here this morning was that they were talking to several teams about switching to Pontiac for next year, had been approached by several teams. They would be here, and they felt strong, confident that they'd have a very strong lineup for uh, the excitement break. There's Bobby Labonte. And Bobby running right now back in 12th spot. He's lost two positions in the last couple of laps to Elliot Sadler and Joni Macek. Ryan Newman out in front early in the Tropicana 400 at Chicagoland. Welcome back to the Chicagoland Speedway. We are under caution after 17 laps for debris on the track. The drive shaft from Ward Burton's car lying near the entrance to Pit Road. Right now here on Pit Road, a scramble. Some teams thinking about pitting, some are going to stay out. We'll have to see what happens down here. Meanwhile, let's go up to the booth and find out what happened out there. All right, Bill, let's go inside our Roush Team Caliber 360 car. Hang on, BP, let's cover these pit okay. stops first. Good. A lot more guys pitting than we thought were going to happen on these pit stops. Dave Burns. Well, Matt Kenseth is, one, Kenseth is one car that decided to stay out. Jimmy Spencer is going to stay back here and change four tires and head back out in the target dodge at this point for Spencer. Running down in the pack, but he's got a chance to come back, guys. It's still a long race. I didn't think we'd see that many guys pit under this caution. Matt? Well, the 36 car is still in, Alan. Kenny Schrader reporting the car was a little wobbly on entry. Tied up off the corner, they pulled a half a rubber out of the right rear, but it was a very close call trying to get to his pit stall with the six in another car. He had to stop and wait for the six to leave before he could pull in. 19th place on down were the guys that stopped. Mr. Parsons, you were saying? Okay, let's go inside once again, our Roush Team Caliper 360 car, and show you what we're talking about by the drive shaft. This is it. It goes from the transmission, engine, transmission, drive shaft, back to the rear gear. The axles in here go out to the tires, and that's what turns it. This is what broke on the 22 car, the drive shaft. And, BP, do you think maybe that spin had anything to do with maybe twisting that drive shaft? It could have. It very well could have. So Ward Burton's got problems, and the Daytona 500 winners' dreadful season to this point since that victory continues. Looked to me like the first one that stopped was the 19th place car. And uh, from then on back were the guys who came down pit road there. Most of the front runners stayed out. And I think that, you know, that's a good move on those guys' part. Obviously, Matt Kenseth, is, it was a great move because everybody followed him in the pit. So now he's got fresh tires and a full load of gas, and all these cars in front of him are going to have the pit, or they're on older tires. So it's going to be interesting to see, BP, if these guys can cut through the field on new tires like what we saw yesterday. Tires made a big difference. Bill? Hey, Alan, a lot of guys down here already thinking gas mileage strategy as well because there's a possibility, and just the possibility, that this thing could go long green. So that's why some guys stop. Mark Martin is second in points. His car was very loose at the beginning of the race. He came down pit road, but just cleaned the grill and got fuel because his car seems to get better the longer they run. So watch for that. Mark Martin second in points, but restarts near the rear of the field. Check out our Wendy's race menu, let you know what's coming up as our coverage of NASCAR continues on NBC and TNT. Next weekend, it's on to Loudoun, New Hampshire. For coverage of the New England 300, you'll see that on TNT, as well as the Bush Series race next Saturday night from St. Louis. Pocono, the giant two and a half mile track in Pennsylvania, July 28th, and the Brickyard 400 and the road course in Watkins Glen. Pace cars off, set to go back racing. Ryan Newman out in front. 
It's Bill Elliott, Tony Stewart, Dale Earnhardt Jr., green and flag. Rusty Wallace, the top five. And one reason that these teams would choose to fit now this early on is they are now in a fuel window. They can make it on three more stops. Some of these other guys in front are going to have to stop four times. They've only got to stop three times. That's a good reason. A very good reason. Dale Jarrett trying to get a spot on Rusty Wallace. Not able to do so. Rusty running fifth, DJ in sixth. in yesterday's practice, Ryan Newman and Dale Earnhardt Jr., they had the fastest laps. A lot of folks thought that Dale Jr. was going to be tough to beat today that I talked to down in the garage this morning. Yeah, that was the consensus on of the folks I talked to. The eight-car Jr. would be the car to beat. And so far, he's looking pretty good, hanging in, in, in fourth place. Dave Blaney uh, looked like he was cutting underneath there to pass somewhat. Maybe Kevin Harvick, he's already up to 22nd. Starting from the rear. Wally, I think they made Dave Blaney a little angry today. And probably himself, too. I know when you when you do that, I I did that once in Las Vegas. I passed about 15 cars before turn one. I just forgot you weren't supposed to. Between flag drops. Now, if you've been playing the Tropicana Drink Watch and Win game, this is the 24th lap, and this is going to determine who wins. Where does Jeff Gordon place in the field at the completion of lap 24? He is in 16th place right now. People scrambling for bottle caps all over America right now. There's Jeff, just behind John Andretti. We'll avoid all the squeeze jokes there with the Tropicana promotion. All right, what's it going to be? The winning position for Jeff Gordon in the drink, watch, and win. 16th place. If you had Jeff Gordon in 16th after lap 24, you are a winner from Tropicana. And you're going to be so mad if he passes someone in one lap and you had 15 on your car. Yes. <laughs> all right, so Jeff Gordon running 16th now, fifth place in the championship. Jeff's car looks like it gets into the corner really, really good. Looks like he gets a pretty good run off the corner. It's Robbie Gordon leading that through. Richard Childress, 31. Right up on the back of the 43 car. Ryan Newman is the leader in the Tropicana 400 from Chicagoland. You're watching NASCAR on NBC.